Today I'm going to show you how to upgrade your SSD and your ROG Ally and to do so in a way that you don't lose any of your files from your old SSD. We're going to do that through cloning your old SSD to the new one. If you don't need to clone your SSD and would rather use cloud recovery, check out my other video where I showed you how to go through that process. But if you're here to clone your SSD, let's go over what you need. You're going to need a few things to do this upgrade. You're going to need a Phillips screwdriver number 1 and 00, a guitar pick, a 2230 size M.2 SSD, a USB-C SSD enclosure, a USB-C dock, your charger, and some software to clone the SSD. To start things off, we'll get our new SSD ready. The ROG Ally has a USB 3.2 Gen 2 port, so if you have an SSD enclosure and dock that can match, then that definitely helps out. You can see that this SSD enclosure from Ugreen does support USB 3.2 Gen 2, so we're going to be operating at the maximum speed. You also want to make sure that you have a dock that's capable as well, so I have another one from Ugreen as well. And it also supports USB 3.2 Gen 2 through USB-A and USB-C. Later on in the video, I'm going to go more in depth into these two products, but for now let's carry on. So let's pull out our enclosure. And included should be some cords that you can use. So if we check here, there should be a USB-A to USB-C and a USB-C to USB-C. I'll be using USB-C to USB-C, but use whatever works best for your setup. So let's go ahead and get the SSD ready. So you can push the button on the back here, then insert your new SSD card. And the nice thing about this enclosure in particular is you don't need any screwdrivers or screws. You can just use this little rubber piece and stick it in there, which will secure the SSD down. So we can go ahead and close this up by just sliding it closed. And now we've got our new SSD ready to go. So let's go ahead and move on to the Ally and get it ready to go. Now that we have our SSD and dock sorted out, let's work on getting the Ally ready to clone. Before we do this cloning, we need to turn off the device's encryption. So to do this, we need to go to the start bar and we need to search for BitLock. You'll see the device encryption settings pop up. So click on that. And then all we need to do is toggle this to off. Now it's gonna take a little time, so we'll come back when it's done. Okay, the process is done now. So now you can see that it has it toggled off. So the reason we wanna do this is that when your device has an encrypted drive, you're gonna to need to input your uh, BitLocker keys. So we're just turning this off so that we don't have to do that. And now that we've got our BitLock off, we can go ahead and reboot our device. And then we're gonna grab some software to actually do the cloning. So let's restart now. Now that we have BitLock disabled, let's go ahead and grab some software for the actual cloning. So I usually use EaseUS for this, but I'm gonna show you guys one that has a free trial. So we're gonna grab Mac Chrome Reflect. So let's just go to our browser and search it. And in Chrome, it should pop up as your first result here. Macrium Reflect free trials. And you can just scroll down to the bottom. We're not going to get the workplace one or the work, sorry, the workstation one. We're going to get the home trial. But if you want to do this, if this is something that you're planning to do numerous times, you can just grab their uh, actual license here. So they have a one-time purchase. It's $80 for one computer. I'd recommend if you do decide to go with this, just buy one computer and you can always de-authenticate it on whatever device you've used and move it over to another one. But we're not going to do that today. We're just going to get the free trial. So scroll back down and grab the free trial here. You're going to need to enter your email here, so go ahead and do that. And I've already done this, so I'm not gonna show you this process because it's gonna just redo everything. Next, it's gonna ask you to opt into different emails, so go ahead and choose what you wanna do there. And then you need to check your email to actually click on and verify the account. And just to show you the email that you can expect, you're gonna get something like this with a registration code, as well as a link to actually download the software. So make sure that you download it and use your registration code, and you should start the clock for a 30-day trial. Now you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and go to your downloads folder and run the installer here. So we're gonna double click that. And then the product is home. It's the only option you have here. You can select where you wanna save it. I've already selected mine, and then you can decide to run the installer directly after downloading. So we'll go ahead and check that. And let's click down. Download. Now, depending on your internet, this might take a little bit or it'll be pretty quick if you have fast internet. Go through the prompts and then we'll just click next, sign our life away. And this is where you're gonna need to put your license key. And this is where you put your license key if you purchased, but we got the trial. So we're just gonna make sure that's checked and click next. And then it'll tell you when it's gonna expire and you can go ahead and start. So you'll need to input your registration code that you got from your email, as well as input your email address, the same one that you'd use to sign up. Then we can click next and we'll click next again and install. Click finish and you should be good to go. Once you're done installing, one thing to note is you will have to reboot your system again. Now that we've got Macrium ready to go, we can go ahead and get our SSD enclosure plugged in. So I can use any of these three ports, but I'm going to use the USB 3. These are all USB 3.2 Gen 2, so it'll be the same speed regardless of which one you choose. 
Make sure you also plug in your power charger so you have power delivery so it doesn't die during the process. As well, that will also provide power to your SSD enclosure. And now that I've got everything plugged in for the dock, I can plug in my SSD enclosure and we can go ahead and start the cloning process. Now that we've got everything good to go, we've got our SSD enclosure plugged into our dock and we have our dock plugged into power and of course connected to the Ally, we can go ahead and run Macrium. And you should see your anything that you have plugged in. So I would recommend removing anything that's not related to this. So if you have a micro SD card, it would be smart to remove it just to make sure. So here you can see this is the drive that comes with the Ally. It's just under 500 gigabytes. And our target is this one terabyte drive, the Sabrent one terabyte. And you can see that I've previously used mine. You wouldn't normally see this if you're if you have a brand new drive. So I'm going to go ahead and just do an extra step. And for anyone that has a used drive, I'll show you how to do this. So we're going to click on clone this disk. So you can confirm that this is the correct disk to clone, which you can see that this is the one that I have in my ally. So then we're gonna click our destination. And then here you can see our one terabyte drive. So I'll click that. Now, because I have a used disk, I'm just gonna press erase disk. And this is what it's gonna look like for anyone that's using a brand new drive. So we're gonna click copy partitions and we're gonna click shrink or extend. And you wanna verify to make sure that the C drive is all the way full. So you can see it's giving it 952 gigabytes. So that's correct. If not, you can always adjust it in the layout tab and uh, select which one you'd want to change you could change this one make it larger if you wanted but we're going to leave those because we don't want to extend those so now that we've got this all set up we're going to click next and you can schedule this if you'd like but we're going to go ahead and do it right now so next this will give you a summary of what's going to happen so we can go ahead and press finish It'll pop up a backup save option. So you can go ahead and save this if you'd like, press okay. And it's gonna give you a warning that says that the following drive is gonna be overwritten. So that's of course our target drive. And we're gonna go ahead and make sure that this is correct. So that's D and I know that this is the correct one. So go ahead and check the box and press continue. Now this is gonna take a little bit of time. So I'm gonna leave this and we'll come back once it's done. So now the cloning process is completed. So we can go ahead and press okay and close. Now we can shut down and we'll go ahead and get to installing our SSD. All right, let's move on to taking apart our device. So we need to remove the back cover. We need a Phillips number one size screwdriver. We're going to loosen and remove the five screws that I've labeled with the red circles. And then we're just gonna loosen the one that's in the bottom middle that I've labeled in yellow. This screw isn't removable, so it'll stay with the case. The screws are massive and they're all the same size. Don't worry about mixing them. Make sure you're using the number one Phillips so you don't strip the screws. The last one you unscrew until it just spins in place. Now we can go ahead and remove our back plate. So you can use a pry tool or a guitar pick. I do recommend a guitar pick it's gonna work better I recommend using the tip of the guitar pick to pry up and it should pop out pretty easily this is actually one of the easiest devices I've taken apart now we can go ahead and lift the back plate off and there's no ribbon cable so don't worry about that so let's set that aside and now we can get to the SSD before we get started let's do a quick overview so our first step is going to be unplugging the battery cable then we need to take out the screw that's holding in the old SSD remove the SSD and place in the new one then we can screw it back down and plug in the battery again all right let's get to it so our first step was to remove the battery cable. So the battery cable is right in the center. You just want to grab it firmly and pull it straight out. The SSD is located on the left side in the middle under the flap. So we're going to take out the screw with our Phillips number one, and then we can pull out our SSD gently. Now grab your new SSD, make sure it's lined up and slide it straight in. Once you know it's in, you can tighten the screw. Don't go overboard with tightening. Now we can go ahead and plug our battery back in and then put the device back together. One thing to note is that the device will not power on until all three bottom screws are tightened in. To secure the shell, start in a corner and just start pressing it together until you hear a click. This should click together without too much effort. If it feels like there's too much effort, it might not be lined up. Now that we've got it clicked back on, let's go ahead and put in our six screws. It doesn't really matter what order you put the screws in, but I probably would have done it a little bit different. Maybe put the bottom middle one in first. Aside from that, it's pretty straightforward. Now we can go ahead and power on our device and we can get started. Now that we've booted up, it looks like everything went through, but let's just verify. So let's go to this PC and make sure. So you can see we have the 952 gigabytes, so it looks like everything went through. We'll double check our documents. And you can see that my programs are still here, so everything went through as intended. So that's how you clone your SSD on your ROG Ally using Macrium. Now, before we end this video, I will show you a potential use for that SSD enclosure and maybe how to repurpose your old SSD. And I'll also give you a little bit more information about that dock I was showing earlier because it's actually pretty cool. Okay, so let's take a look. Now that you're done, you have a spare SSD. So if you're still within your return window, I wouldn't recommend using it for anything else yet. But if you're past that, 
You can go ahead and put it inside the SSD enclosure and use it for spare storage when connected to the dock. That way if there's games that you more likely are going to play when docked to the TV or docked to your monitor, you could just stick them on here and have them ready to go. And if you're using it longer term, use the silicone pad that's included, cut it down and put it in for better heat dissipation. Now on to more product info. Some more information for the Ugreen SSD enclosure I used, it has a 10 gigabyte transfer speed with USB 3.2 Gen 2. Compatible sizes are 2230, 2242, 2260, and 2280. It supports M key and B and M key, and the supported protocol is NVMe and SATA. You can find a link in the video description if you're looking to pick one up. And for the Ugreen 9-in-1 docking station, we have 100 watt power delivery, we have one USB-C and two USB-A ports, USB 3.2 Gen 2 that's capable of 10 gigabits per second. We have dual monitor support through two HDMI 2 ports and two DP ports, both capable of 4K60. We have a one gigabit per second ethernet port and a power button. Let's go ahead and test it out. So let's plug in our power, our first HDMI, our second HDMI, our ethernet port, and the USB-C to connect to the device. And as you can see, my ROG Ally is displayed on two monitors here, so I'm probably gonna adopt this into my regular editing setup with my laptop. If you're interested in this dock, check the video description for the link. Thank you to Ugreen for providing the SSD enclosure and the dock for this video. I hope this video was helpful for you and thank you for watching.